The old Mercy Hospital stood like a decaying monument at the edge of town, its walls echoing with forgotten whispers. I never believed the rumors about it. That is, until I found myself working there as a night shift nurse. It was a decision born of desperation, for jobs were scarce and bills were plenty. The first weeks were uneventful, filled with the routine care of patients and the occasional odd noises that one attributes to an old building. But one night, everything changed. It was a stormy evening, the kind where the wind howls like a grieving widow and rain lashes against the windows with unrelenting fury. That night, I was assigned to the old wing, known among staff as the Silent Ward. No one talked about why it was called that, but I soon found out. Walking through those dimly lit corridors felt like traversing a threshold into another world. The air was heavy, as if saturated with unseen dread. The patients in this ward were different too. They never spoke. Their eyes glazed, staring at something only they could see. As midnight approached, the power flickered and went out, plunging the hospital into darkness. I fumbled for my flashlight, its beam a small island of light in an ocean of black. That's when I heard it. A soft, rhythmic tapping, like someone gently knocking on a window. I followed the sound, my heart pounding in my chest, to room 19. The door was slightly ajar. Pushing it open, I peered inside. The room was empty, save for the usual hospital furnishings. But the window, previously shut tight, was now open, rainwater pooling on the sill. Suddenly, the tapping stopped, replaced by a low guttural whisper. Help me, it said, a voice filled with such despair that it rooted me to the spot. The temperature in the room dropped, my breath visible in the cold air. Then, as quickly as it started, the whisper ceased, and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. Shaken, I reported the incident to the head nurse. She listened, her expression unreadable, then simply said, It happens. Best to ignore it. Her response left me unnerved. The following nights were a descent into a nightmare I couldn't wake from. Each shift brought new horrors. I would find items moved or missing, hear anguished wails from empty rooms, and once, a shadowy figure darted past me in the corridor, its form barely human. But the worst was yet to come. On the seventh night, I encountered her, the woman in white. She appeared at the far end of the corridor, her face obscured by a veil of long, matted hair. She moved towards me, her footsteps silent. Paralyzed with fear, I could only watch as she stopped before me, lifting her head to reveal empty eye sockets, a void where her eyes should have been. She reached out, her fingers inches from my face, and whispered, See. In that instant, a flood of images assaulted my mind, visions of unspeakable horrors, patients subjected to gruesome experiments, their silent screams etched in eternity. The hospital's dark past unveiled itself to me, a legacy of pain and suffering hidden behind its decaying walls. When the vision ended, she was gone, and I was left trembling on the floor, the echo of her whisper lingering in my ears. I resigned the next day, unable to bear the weight of the horrors I had witnessed. The old Mercy Hospital still stands, its secrets buried within. They say it's haunted, and I know it to be true, for in its forgotten halls the tormented souls of the past linger, trapped in a never-ending cycle of despair. And sometimes, on stormy nights, if you listen closely, you can hear the soft tapping on the windows of the silent ward, a solemn reminder of the suffering that once dwelled there.